<laughs> Welcome back to round number two of Wednesday Night Standard. I'm the affable Taylor Gunn and the... The laughable John Douglas. The laughable John Douglas. Starting off with Mono Blue Tempo versus Blue Red Arc Light. Um, Apparently this is a modern deck now. Yeah, well, they just throw it in the hollowed one. The Arc Light Phoenix combo goes mm -hmm. in the hollowed one deck. And here we go. Not really a combo. You just kind of discard it and get it back. Zach is where he wants to be. This is where every every young man dreams of being. Drawing an additional card every turn. Leaving islands untapped. Diving down having dive, into the depths. Having dive downs. So Cody needs a shock to follow up. Nope. Doesn't have it. And now we're going to... Start this journey. Yep, here we go. Game on. Game on, friend. Can Zach protect it for eight more turns? Eight more turns? Well, he really... He really uh, doesn't need to do it for eight turns. It's... It's going to get joined by other things, I promise. Do you promise? You you wouldn't lie to me, would you? Maybe. Mm, oh. See, I don't like that. You don't? Don't like that one bit. All right, here's an Arclight Phoenix. Let's see if we can get land spell spell here. Now, see, I would have fired the shock off at it. Why? Is that a shock in the top of his hand there? Yeah. Um, I'm just putting putting Zach to the test every turn. Well, why not wait until his man is a little bit more taxed on his turn? Okay, maybe. Shock it. All right, spell pierce. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Storm Tamer. All right. Yeah, Cody's a little land light. And he really wanted to draw the fourth land off of that chart the course last turn. Absolutely. Um, in that case, he probably would have done it just to just to get back the, you know, get back the arc light phoenixes. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Alright, here is a Goblin Electromancer. Gonna keep all his spells cheap. Big bad Gobbo Daddy. And so now Zach has increased his clock by a whole turn by playing a 1-1. One, one. That's good. And the lands keep coming. He's still got ops. He's still got spell pierces. This is quite the situation. And they're unblockable. We're going to jumpstart a draw card here. Radical idea. All right. It's pretty radical. All right. So let's... Let's draw two. Let's chart the course here first. Draw one. Draw two. Discard a third Arclight Phoenix. Oh, this could be it. This could be it. Let's... We have the land. Okay. And now we, we have at least have the radical idea... In the bin that we can bring back. Okay, this card. Uh, it's Surveil 2, draw card. So that helps. It definitely helps. Uh, I think Zach's considering it. I think Zach knows what's going to happen here. Yeah. And so he's... Got a wizard's retort for that. And now, let's see what the third. We'll just try it again. Give it one more shot. Does he have to resolve these triggers on the Arclight Phoenixes first? Or is that a beginning of combat trigger? I 
at the beginning of combat trigger. So there you go, folks. Boop. There's three Arclight Phoenixes coming in. And they have flying in haste. So here's nine in the air. Uh, let's try 11. Nine in well, the air. Two another two on the ground. ground. Yep. Two turn clock is the, uh, the important part here. Some storms never blow over. You don't say. Oh, well, I I say I don't I don't believe that there's ever been a weather pattern that just stays put in Earth. But apparently on Ravnica, some storms never blow over. I would disagree with that statement. Well, Arclight Phoenix disagrees with you. All right. Well, yes, we understand. <laughs> yeah. It's a flavor text, flavor text on Arclight Phoenix. Sleep is the only way out of this now. Sleep is the only way out of my life, usually, so I'm well acquainted with that statement, The Last God. <laughs> oh, man. That got dark very quickly. <laughs> Sometimes you just need to sleep for as long as possible. As long as, as, long as your obligations allow you to. <laughs> it's really, really what that's about. All right, Cody down to nine. Zach needs to find a way to survive this next turn. Sleep is a beating. Sleep has been has been beating the pants off me on Magic Online. Yeah. Apparently, there's a, a merfolk like precon or whatever, and people have just been jamming sleep against me when I play against that deck, and it's just miserable, man. Play around it. Sure. Easy peasy. Easy game. Play around it. Zach would love a, a gin right now. The old Tempest gin. The old Tempest gin. Might settle for an exclusion mage, although it doesn't really do anything. I guess it lets you survive the turn. Yeah, because the Arclight Phoenix cost five. If you want to, if you want to play from your hand or four, I'm sorry. Yeah, he can so cast Cody it. Cody could cast one still on, on you, but... But if you play that blocker and force him to tap out to play the other guy, then you're definitely only taking nine. You're only taking six, so I'd probably block the uh, Electromancer with the Exclusion Mage. Yeah, but there's not... I mean, I guess you can do that. That's fine. And there's that, not a whole lot of point in blocking Arclight Phoenix with a Storm Tamer. Because if you get a second Storm Tamer, it kills an arc light phoenix yeah or you could put like a a after combat uh a curious obsession on it mm -hmm. well, we already attacked this turn so right all right here's opt he has a dive down picks up dive down that lets the storm light or a uh, storm tamer survive the turn there's another opt that one's going to the bottom one on the bottom. Let's find a card here. Bah. Just a land. Lando Calrissian. All right, here they are. A flock of Phoenix. What do you think a flock of Phoenixes is called? A down? No. A rise. An inferno. An, in oh, an inferno of phoenixes is really nice. <laughs> I was playing that game with uh, Dive Down. Our very own environmental scientist, Ben Brodingham, and he brought up ladybugs. Yeah. A flock of ladybugs. Wait, wait a minute. It was called something f awesome. Not a flock. Correct. All right. So we survived. We're at three. 
time to suit up our yeah. merfolk. Yeah, this merfolk is wearing a lot of... Oh, and he's going to come in for four damage now. Last God 51 says it's a society of ladybugs. It's a loveliness. A loveliness? A loveliness of ladybugs. Isn't she lovely? Oh, there's the sleep. We found it. Yes, this is why the attack was so large last turn. So... So here's the deal. If he can kill one of his Arclight Phoenixes and then recur it, he can win the game this turn. So I don't know if he wants to Radical Idea now. If he could untap and cast a Lightning Strike. Yeah, that would also do it. He could win the game. Also doesn't have a Lightning Strike. I mean, there has to be a Lightning Strike in the, in the 75, right? All right. Oh, we have a blink of the eye, which will allow him to bounce and replay an Arclight Phoenix and get in there. Yeah. See if he sees it. He doesn't. He's going to play this Cackling Drake. And does he have like a, is there a. Oh, I thought there might have been a. Maximum velocity in the graveyard. Maximize velocity. You would have thought wrong. All right. So what's Zach's play here? He's got this giant Drake. Yeah, he needs to play three Tempest Gins this turn. And I don't think he's going to be able to do that with five mana, so that'll do it. He's got it. So Cody had two lines there that won him the game. Well, that line didn't actually win him the game. It bought him another turn, which happened to be enough to win him the game. Okay. Very interesting. So a, ladiness, uh, a loveliness of ladybugs... A Inferno of Phoenixes came down and beat the, what are a lot of merfolk called? A pod? A pod of merfolk? Yeah, we'll I'm call not it sure. a pod. Well, there is a merfolk schoolmaster, right? Oh, it's a, it would be a school. So sure. it'd have to be a school. Yeah, I think they're they school like fish. That would just that would just be like saying that we troop like monkeys. Where a bunch of humans is called a crowd. But a bunch of monkeys is called a troop. I think it depends on the monkey. I think all any group of great apes Outside of us. Is what do you call a group of grape apes? <laughs> a bunch. A bunch. <laughs> it's called, oh, man. What a great cartoon character. Grape ape. You're not lying. I'm not, listen, I can't tell a lie. Well, you can. I'm physically capable of it. I. Honest Abe over here. Get in some shivin fires, a bane fire. Man, I want that lava coil. I don't know what we're bringing it over that, but... It does kill Tempest Gins. Shinfire Banefire, does he have any uh, enchanting melodies? I feel like that card's worthwhile in this matchup. Is that weird? You're weird. Uh, so enchanting melody is good at taking vanguards. Okay. Lodanto vanguards. So he would want it in his sideboard anyway. Yeah. But I don't think it's good in this matchup. Cost too much. And that's more of a chess guy card anyway. Sure. Zach West taking full advantage of his uh, once per match. 
Once per game. Once per match. No, you get once per game. You get one per match if you're playing against me. Or I will reach across that table. No, oh, what? <laughs> Holy smokes. You'll reach across the table and help me pile shuffle? No. No? All right. Slap the taste out of your mouth for pile shuffling. Slap the taste out of my mouth. What are you doing? Um, if it's anybody else pile shuffling, it's fine. Just you. Just, yeah, absolutely. I th expect you to hold me to a higher standard. I do. Um, an impossible standard, even. Okay. All right. So, what? I'm just getting tilted by... All the pile the, shuffling. The dueling pile off. shuffles. <laughs> Cody responds with a even more piley pile shuffle as he added a pile of eight. If I see one more pile, I'm going out there. I want to know what kind of sleeves these are that Cody has. They're almost... They're dragon shield and matte. Are they? They're yeah. almost like paper in color. Like they have that parchment kind of color to them. I think they're ivory. Is that what that is? Yeah. They are sharp. I had a commander deck sleeve in those once. Once upon a time? Yeah, it's one of the ones that fell victim to it being like way too good. Legion such is, such double is the life of your commander decks, humble brag. <laughs> my commander decks often too good. They're too good I for my to take play, play group. Yeah. I think we need you need to start a high power commander playgroup. I don't want to. Then why do you why do you make these two good decks? That was like five years ago. Oh. Okay. They are made out of genuine ivory. <laughs> genuine. Can't bring them across country borders without getting accused of smuggling banned goods. It is a very inconvenient set of sleeves. <laughs> I agree. And that would be very inconvenient. Um, I would like to note that Taylor Gunn, his uh, I don't know, his opinions on the uh, the illegal ivory trade do not represent the opinions <laughs> of Top Deck Productions. What do you mean, my opinions? I'm, I'm against. You said the ivory sleeves were really nice. I don't, so you're I all don't, for I think slaughtering th elephants and no, stealing their ivory. I never said that I was okay yeah, it's with It's implied. I said that I liked the the sleeves. I didn't think they were made out of actual ivory. It's heavily implied. Here's the exclusion mage. Taylor Gunn hates elephants. I you heard it here first. Can I be honest about something right now? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get real honest. Um Every every F elephants. <laughs> <laughs> um, every so often, I have to go back and read articles on why biodiversity is important. <laughs> like, like when certain animals die, and I'm like, yeah, that's sad. But like, why do I care that there's eastern white rhinos? Like, we still got the western ones. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and then I go back and I read an article from a bio scientist about like. Here's why we need to care about biodiversity. And I'm like, okay, I care about that again. But I just oh, okay, forget. that makes sense. That makes sense. But, like, I'm in America, and I, like, you know, there isn't a white rhino within 10,000 miles of me. Not in captivity. So, yeah. So, like, it's not affecting my environment. Well, then. Well, this is a great opinion. High power commander is like playing cutthroat popper. People do it, but it's missing the point. Um, so the nature of, so I played commander. Here's another humble brag for you. Okay. Like from the very beginning when it was called EH, like not when like just judges were playing it, but like right when it started gaining popularity. Yeah. Well, it took off in the Cleveland area. Right. Uh, really aggressively. So it came down to Cincinnati pretty quick. Um, and I had played five color previous to that. So like these weird variant formats were. Right near. I loved five color. Five before, color is great. Before, uh, before the original Ravnica came out, 
and trans transmute was a mechanic. Five yeah. color was awesome. Transmute really destroyed that. Right. Anyway, back in the day, the original intent of Commander EDH. Well, so the original intent was just to have fun. It was always to have fun. But anytime you're in a play group for too long, like one person feels like their deck isn't as good as the other ones, they make it better, and then that continues right, yeah, to continue. Right. And after a few years, like everybody's got really high powered decks. We were at a point at one time where, what was I playing? Um, Dark Blast in Commander. Uh huh. To kill Rafelos. Sure. Whatever the plural of Rafelos is, because everybody had a Rafelos deck at that point. Yep. You're right before that guy got banned. Yeah. Well, not right before it. But yeah, I remember when we played with. Um. So one of our friends is just like ahead of the curve uh, in life because he finished veterinary school at like the age of 21. So he was just like make, doing like way better than everybody else financially. So he, when he built his commander deck, he was like, oh, sweet. I'm going to go buy all these like Portal Three Kingdoms cards that fit in. And like he just optimized very quickly, whereas the rest of us didn't do that. And it just became really unfun. I was playing a Zedru pre-con at that point. Yeah. Um, which I thought that deck was fun. I was, I, I was playing, uh, until uh, I optimized Rafiki, it. Rafiki, uh, two reflections. Or what's it? Rafiki. Is it Rafiki? Oh, no, that's oh, yeah. God, that movie's coming out soon, isn't it? No, not Rafiki the many. That's the bank guy. This guy's Tim, Timir. Teamer. Teamer. <laughs> It's Riku of the Two Reflections. Riku of the of Two Reflections. Uh, anyway, that deck was fun. Mm-hmm. Um, all the way up until this latest release, all the precons were pretty fun. Yeah, Atrex is pretty op. The precon wasn't. Yeah, the precon wasn't, but it like, was strong. Yeah, I mean those got out of hand. Way too fast. I think it was just the most obvious one to make, like, really good. I really liked Brea. All right, Cody's going to take this one down. We saw the power of uh, Drake's ability to really turn the corner, uh, especially game one. He was really under the gun and then just snapped it off, turned the corner, got three Phoenixes back, and then two turns later, the game was over. Yeah, and I think it's important to note that he had multiple arc lights both games. Yeah, that's pretty important. I think so. I think one arc light is like manageable, um, but when you get the second or the third, yeah, the second like six damage a turn is a you're lot. not going to survive very long. With right. That. Um, he was also able to keep cards flowing. Like his hand was very full both the games, um, and so you know, full hand helps you get to the three spells to trigger the arc light coming back. Should should it die to something that's true or another hey spotter guy you want to try and find another match we got like 25 minutes left yes yeah, so we're gonna fill some space with like to get match. another one in here i think i just saw him walking to the back hold on a second um while we've got some time Let's talk about a, a, the hot magic topic of the week. Uh, I'll let you introduce that. I'm going to go see if he's checking for another match. I'll be right back. Okay. Um, so many of you may or may not know, and I'm going to search this up. It's going to take me two seconds to find it on the internet. Uh, I'm going to put the link in the chat. There was a Grand Prix over the weekend in Warsaw, Poland. And there was a disqualification at this Grand Prix. Now, let's see here. If I can pull this up and then get to the... I want to get to the Reddit thread on it because the guy... The disqualified player made a post on Reddit. And he described the situation. So I'm going to describe the situation in my mind. Or in my words. And then I'll let you guys read his post as well. Guy casts a spell. 
and just kind of just kind of lets it let uh, his opponent just kind of looks at him. It's just uh, it just kind of sits there, whatever. And eventually, the guy casting the spell it was some creature, um, and he just says go. And the the con there was controversy over how long the silence between the two players was. And when he says go, the guy goes, "Oh no, wait! I want to counterspell that." Now, the oh good, I'm on camera. He can see me. How's it going? I'm wearing my car hard. It's kind of cold here in Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, so he there's there's time there, right? There's there's a spacing between uh, the time when I do not look good in this. I won't lie to you guys. I am a little vain, and I don't like these these uh, these lights. And I feel like they make me look real round and fat because they're coming in at these angles. I want something slimmer. All right. So there's time between casting the spell and when his opponent resolves it. Uh, and the, so the opponent goes, no, you can't counterspell it. You let it resolve. And so they call a judge. Judge comes over. Here's their story. They don't like that judge's ruling. And this happens at Grand Prix all the time. It's gotten to the point where it, it's called an appeal. So they appeal to the head judge. So it's gotten to the point where Grand Prix are so big and there's so many appeals that there's now three people qualified to handle appeals at every Grand Prix. So they call they call the head judge over. Head judge hears the story and he gets into this in his Reddit posts about like the details of how what the head judge said to him and the thought process behind the disqualification which I suppose is the point of controversy. So the head judge says something to the effect of either you are... All right, come on down. Let's see if I can scroll through this post, please. Thank you. All right. Okay. The head judge says... Uh... sat down and told us these two options. First is he could think that he intentionally let it linger to see if his opponent cast something better or that the head judge could say he did not do that and then he had to decide whether or not it was too late to counter. So the head judge basically told him I think that you are that you intentionally let it let the spell out there to try and bait your opponent into giving you more information uh, about what's in his or her hand. Um, and that's a huge judgment call to make. Because, In my opinion, it's a huge judgment call to make because um, it doesn't necessarily... You didn't necessarily uh, lie to your opponent about anything... Like, silence isn't lying, in my opinion. And you didn't lie to your opponent about anything in order to gain uh, information about the game state. Um, if your opponent wants you to, you know, respond or, like, wants to go to an answer, they can ask you a question. I mean, and I've done this before where people, like, look at me stupid and I'm just like, uh, it's your priority. Or, like, you know what I mean? So, especially in the later rounds of a tournament... Um, like a Grand Prix, you've... I'd like to think if you're good enough to play in the later rounds of a Grand Prix, you've played enough Magic to understand what uh, what's going on. I'm going to hope that that's just my TV. There we go. It was just my TV freaking out. Sorry, I didn't have a view of myself there for a minute. Um, so you've played enough magic to understand how to communicate well with your. Opponent. What up? And it's your boy. <laughs> I'm John, back. Handsome John Douglas, ladies and gentlemen. Mash that subscribe button. Boop, 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 boop. I got a game three for us coming up. We got a game three. Mash it. You gotta mash that game three. Mash that game three. Mash button. that game three. Subscribe Cheer those bits. Up, Cheer all them bits. Cheer bits. Cheer, Cheer them up. bits. Cheer the bits. Uh, so what were we talking about? I was talking about the uh, Warsaw DQ. 
Oh, the old saw DQ. Um, and the the story that I read on Reddit basically uh, led to, you know, the head judge said, "Here's my here's my opinion. I think you your silence was trying to bait your opponent, mm -hmm. and I don't think that falls within the rules of Magic: The Gathering." Okay. And I disagree. You think that silence plays an integral part of Magic the Gathering? I think if you want to remain quiet while you think, that is up to you. Okay. And if your opponent does not understand what's going on, it should it's up to them to say, I need I need clarification as to what is happening right now. I hear you. And neither player did this. Neither player asked for clarification. So if your opponent's being quiet and wants to just, you know, you know, only say what they're doing. Yeah. Then that's fine, but it's up. The, then it's on you to say, uh, "Hold up, are you are you acknowledging my spell? Does this resolve?" Yes. Um, and you can ask those things. Those things are fine. And if your opponent asks you that, you can just be like, "I don't recognize your spell. I don't acknowledge it. You didn't cast anything." Yeah, so 151 ties? I don't know what your name is. But I thought this was a Conclave Tribunal, too, when, when uh, John first brought it up to me last night. Uh, so I don't know if there was another story out there with a Conclave Tribunal. Um, or if it's just a similar card. The card that was cast was a uh, Skymark Aspirant, I believe. Yeah. Um, one violence, that was the, that's what, that's not what either player thought from the way the story was recounted. It was what the judge decided. Skyline scout, I apologize. Was going on. Yeah, you gotta scout that skyline, man. Absolutely. One near us is open till 10. Open till 10, um, probably like a B minus. Yeah, I think it's in, it's probably in the second quartile of Skylines. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not, not great. It's not a premium Skyline, but it's no. fine. It's 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 not one that I avoid. Now, there are ones that I avoid oh, that I yeah. won't go to. There are actively bad ones. Which which one do you will you not go to? Which one or which ones? Well, okay. Which one are you nearest the most that you won't go to? Um, the one right by the highway. Yeah, on Mason Montgomery. Yeah, yeah that, that one's that one's bad. Not good. And it's a shame because if it was any good, it's really close to my work. Absolutely. I'd eat there all the time. I drive by it constantly. Here's a thought erasure from Luke trying to break up the the smooth flow of Clayton Cardinal's uh <laughs> Scout? Look at this. <laughs> we got the two drop Daredevil in red, the three drop Bugler in white, in white the three drop Thief of Sandy in blue and black. <laughs> the Eldest Reborn. <laughs> the Eldest Reborn. <laughs> at five. And uh, Big Choops at double black. But at least we're playing these. Explore, guys, to keep the cards flowing. Yeah, that's uh, got to be an integral part of this deck. I kind of like watching the deck. Like, you never know what's going to happen next. Yeah, but... It's not good. All the props in the world to Clayton for playing it and doing well. Like, I'm sure it's fun. Yeah. Mm. And I'm sure it leads to some interesting decisions, like... Bugling into like a decision is like well, I think where you want to be with Bugler. I think the decision is can I cast any of these cards? <laughs> nope. All right. <laughs> I'll take this one that I might be able to cast in the future. Man, we're getting we're field of ruining a sacred foundry to take him off of red. Very nice. Okay. I don't like Field of Ruin in the standard format all that much, but... 
I guess if you're gonna play four colored. Yeah, if you're playing against four colored decks, it's sweet. It's pretty nice. I don't think he has another play after this. Or is that an Argyle's Blood Fest? Yeah. So we've got the old Argyle's Search for Ascanthi combo. Search for Argyle's. Trying to up our doesn't affect the board count. <laughs> Drew the three mana into the Bugler. I think next turn, Luke's going to deploy the Eldest Reborn, which is going to kill a 2-3, and then he'll be one sphere of safety away from locking this game up. Um, all right, chooses to draw that one. There's more land. Oh, it looks like it was a Doom Whisperer. That's a good one here. Uh, but, but alas, some plans were never meant to be diverted from. <laughs> yeah. And Let's the see. Eldest Reborn has joined the fray. the Eldest. I think you usually want to be the second person to play the Eldest Reborn. So you know Clayton's got one in hand, but he's never going to cast it because he's got three mana. Maybe one day. Mentor of the Meek. So if Clayton finds more Meek, meek boys, he will be able to mentor them. <coughs> <coughs> As Cancer remains an enchantment. Clayton's going to discard this Daredevil that he can't cast. And hopefully Luke adds to the board. Show me a board presence. Let's find any dude. I think he doesn't want to commit like a, a dude because he knows it's as soon as a land comes, it's getting chooped. Yeah, but Clayton has to top deck the land. Right. And if Doom Whispers around for one turn... Without that land being drawn, then he is in great shape. Sure. And if he kills it this turn, he can just Eldest Reborn it back. Yeah. So there's that. <coughs> Draws the land, so you know it's coming the, next turn. Mentor the Meek gets its trigger. It's a big deal. I think that's the first value we've seen out of that card t tonight. Draw okay, a card. Look at the Escanta trigger here. Giving it a good think. So if it's like a Doom Whisper or something, you could pay two life to surveil it into your yard before the Eldest Reborn goes off and get back in like another Doom Whisper. Oh, that'd be sick. Uh, it's probably better than... It might not be better than taking a Thief of Sanity. Because that's going to generate a lot of blockers. Sure. Aurelia blocks. And that's about it. I guess you do need some blockers. Well, Aurelia gets to target this Doom Whisperer, too. So, I mean, eight damage this turn is pretty nice. Because that means he's dead next turn with no other interaction. Yeah? Um, yeah, sure. But he, we know he has the mana for the... The tubes. Yeah, big tubes coming down. So do you think the format is too fast for the Eldest Reborn? Or do you feel like that there's a home out there for it? I do love... I love how it's one black. Uh, Eldest Reborn, there's definitely a home for it. It's definitely good in the format. It's just not good against Clayton's deck. Right. But yeah, I love the, the streamlined mana cost on it. Sure. I think you can splash around in this format. I just don't think you can play these straight up four color builds that these guys have. I don't think there's a reason to splash around into like a fourth color. Well, into a third color, I mean. Yeah, sure. Like, I like how the, the Jeskai decks are like splashing for like, you know, I love those versions that just play... Uh, I can't. I want to say Raul. Raul Zarek. Yeah. So block one of these guys. Take, take four, four damage. Yep. Not in great shape. 
Oh, is he letting it all in? Taking yeah. six? Well, all right. Apparently. Well, there we have it. Uh, that's fine. During your upkeep, you want to flip that. Put your game down, flip it, and reverse it. And we want to flip the other one. Oh, sure. That's the big one. That's going to help us survive a little bit. Okay, here we go. I never thought about the Bloodfast uh, Doom Whisperer combo. I guess you could you could flip the Bloodfast at will. Yeah. With the Doom Whisperer. Not really where you want to be, but it's an option. All right, we're going to look at the top card, searching for him and guessing a ritual of soot. I think you found it. There it is. Here's the casting of the ritual. Yeah, just just play it. There you go. Leave up leave up a, a swamp and a there you go. Yeah, you gotta keep man up so you can sacrifice the Aurelia. If need be. Well he's gonna play the Eldest Reborn. Yep, perfect. Getting in there. Getting in there, sacrifices the Aurelia. Does he gain toughness or life? Or toughness or power on that? I believe it's toughness. Okay, goes to nine. Um, It's a two five, right? Oh, yeah, but he took the two from the Chupacabra. Got it. Yep, so let's hope that Luke can find something to do against this, uh... I think he's got a Vraska's Contempt in hand, which is what he'll need to combat whatever he gets back with the Eldest Reborn. Yeah, if Clayton's smart, he's gonna get the Doom Whisper. So I think we take the cast down here. There's a Disinformation Campaign, which is nice... But if I can't cast that and the Vraska's Contempt, I'd rather just cast down. Right. Yeah. And showing him that you have cast down might entice him into getting the Aurelia instead. Oh, sure, because cast down could take the Doom Whisper and you don't have to mess with it. Still going to be a turn away. Did he discard a card? He discarded the... Uh, the water grief. All right, so we've got a thought erasure. <laughs> what a story here! All right, Luke goes to nine. Cast down, down, and I guess we're at the part where Clayton is just. We're both in pretty much in top game, 10. The Eldest Reborn has done some work on Clayton's side here. Yeah. And Luke, despite having two flipped enchantments, he's got Memorial to Folly, Memorial to Genius. In his graveyard. Oh, that'd be... That's, that's the play right here. Let this Eldest Reborn resolve, and then Memorial to Folly, whatever's targeted. Or, just fire it off. <laughs> or just pull the trigger. Do you like my line, though? Um, so it would have been great if Clayton didn't see it. Yeah, Clayton would have targeted his own graveyard. Interesting. So, Clayton's 
Clayton's going to Daredevil cast down. Luke is going to surveil. Keep one on top. And then gain some life. <clears throat> Perfect. I think he cast... No, no, he contempted. He didn't have to pay for the daredevil. Threw me off a little bit. What? He didn't have to pay for the daredevil? No, because he got it back off of the Eldest Reborn. Oh, sure. Here's another Ritual Soot. Yep, Ritual Soot. So now he's just got to face down Aurelia. If Luke pulls this one out, I'm, I'm going to be impressed with the young man. This is... The... 3-5 unblockable guy that puts a guy into the library? No, this is the uncommon guy that costs blue, blue, black, black. Oh, okay. That trades off. It has hexproof and death touch. Hexproof and a death touch. You really gotta you really gotta sell it if that guy's gonna gonna die. Hard card to play against. Yeah. All right, let's make sure they have a clock update so Luke doesn't sandbag this unnecessarily. Yeah, so there's nothing you can really... I'm just saying he has to, like, make his choices, as, you know. Right. I think he just passes here and does all this on Clayton's turn, but... I guess you could draw like a Doom Whisper, which affects this turn. Right. Or maybe like a disinformation campaign. So this is fine. One, two. All right. Pass that bad boy off. Lay and go. We're going to activate. As Kanta. Yep. It's got to feel good to activate as Kanta and see three lands. Just send them to the bottom. Unless you need land. I guess. Has multiple contempts. Just passes the turn here. Just passing. <clears throat> Clayton's thinking about something. I don't see how we're going to finish this game. Thought Erasure. Thought Erasure shows him all the contempts. Uh, end of turn. We get a surveil. Leaving it. Yeah, we're definitely not going to finish this game. We're going to... Yeah, we're past the point in time where that's a reasonable card. <laughs> <laughs> that's not going to... So he could have he could have chosen the Surveil 2 draw yeah. 1 card there, which would have been fantastic. Much would have preferred that card. In the hands, but so what he can do is he can choose to not untap here or not flip this, and he just gets a free scry return. Yeah, which or a free surveil goes to the fine. Band, right? Yeah. All right, we're in turns. Here's turn one. Well, we're on turn zero. This is the end of Clayton's turn. <laughs> Finds a thought erasure. Not interested in finishing this one. Now we're on turn one. All right. Can you find creatures with this Kanta? No. Okay. Because Ben. All 
Thought Erasure taking the Daredevil, I guess. Oh, we're scrying to the top. All right. Going to turn two. So this creature on top has to have 18 power because it's going to get cast on turn three and only attack on turn five. If he doesn't take... Okay, it's a chemist's <laughs> insight. No, that is a sinister sabotage. He opted oh. for the counter spell. Oh, we're, we're okay with the draw here. Interesting. Situations like this is where Nexus of Fate uh, favors you because it doesn't matter who takes the five turns. No. It just matters that there are five turns. That is correct. So the, the rules are real weird that way. And they're written that way so that they don't Siege have... Siege gang, here's this thing that I sandbagged, I guess. Yep. So Luke has definitely set it up so he can't lose the game. Here's a Dream Eater. Here's a contempt. And that's, that's the how draw. It goes. So that was interesting that neither neither deck could punch through, but they were both good at keeping each other off. Yeah, real interesting. Let's go pick an interesting third round match. Yep. And uh, we'll be back here soon. 